found in a barn in Missouri. I saw it in as, a, as an ad in the back of a racing magazine, and I'd been looking for a car that was a little bit different. So I called the guy up and talked him down the price and worked out the final price before I even drove, but then I drove all the way to Missouri and picked it up. When I originally found it, it had a big block Chevrolet in it. Uh -huh. It had uh, the guys of Weiss Speed Shop in St. Louis, Missouri. Throw it away, yeah. Yeah, I took, I took care of that problem in a real big hurry. <laughs> All my friends asked me what I did with the big block. I told them I threw it away. <laughs> Good. Good. Then uh, the guys of Weiss Speed Shop in St. Louis, Missouri had put the car together to run top fuel in 1968. They were running a big block with injectors, and they were injecting nitromethane. But all the cars currently at that time were running blowers. They were all running blowers in nitromethane, so the, this car was running 750s, and all the other cars were running about 7.0s, so they weren't really competitive. And they ran it for a whole year and decided that they weren't going to be able to get this car to be competitive, so they just retired it. And from that point, it had been passed around to a couple of bracket racers in the area, and it ended up in this guy's barn. <clears throat> and it had been in his barn for probably four or five years without being ran. I went up and found it, put it on the trailer, brought it home, and the entire, the entire chassis, brakes, cooling system, everything was all locked up. The brake system had to be replaced, the cooling system was all gummed up. I had to yank the motor, I, I tore it down to the bare frame and had the frame powder coated, and then started putting it back together from there. I had to cut the frame off, the frame had a couple of hoops that is something you wouldn't even drive down the street, it was so unsafe. It only had a couple of small hoops in it to protect you. I cut the frame off and had um, a guy in local here add a funny car cage to it. And I cut the suspension off and added a flowing suspension because it's a little bit better hook. So I did that and did a lot of the brand new brakes, brand new rewired, rewired the entire car, did some work to the body. This, this paint that you see here is um, the original paint on the car. This paint's 25 years old. Wow. They, what they did is they embedded the color directly in the gel coat. The, the purple color you see, that's actually embedded right in the gel coat. That's why it lasted. That's why it's had such longevity. Okay, look the color. Yeah, a 68 look here. Yeah, definitely a 60s look to the yeah, car. That's great. But then the best, oh, go on. Best, best time is um, 990, 137. Usually it runs anywhere between 995 and 991. It's pretty consistent. If, uh, if I run a, a path and I, my 60 foot changes by more than 100, I'm, I'm breaking something. I gotta go find a problem. The car's real consistent. Does this thing ever scare you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it always scares me when I haven't driven it in a while. You get in it, it's a real, when I first bought it, and I, I did all this work on it, got the car really ready to run, rewired it, rebraked it, cooling system, redid the motor, put it all back together and took it out of the track. I hated it on the first pass. It was so different from something I'd ever driven because when you sit in the car and you got the body down around you, you can't look out anywhere. You're in the middle. You can't look over your door. You can't look out the window. You can't look out either window. You can't even reach them. They have some big hood scoop in front that you can't see over and you can't see out the back. So you can't really see where you're going. The first pass down the track, I had a, a problem with the slicks and the car. First it darted toward the guardrail and I kind of backpedaled it and pulled it back to the middle. And then down track it, it went left and, and totally went over the center line. And I had to backpedal it again. So it really had me scared on the first pass. I wasn't comfortable in there. I couldn't see where I was going. The car was running 100 plus miles an hour, get going all over the track. But um, I got all the suspension bugs worked out. It runs straight now, it runs like a bullet. I'm comfortable in there. I, I have a feel for where I am on the track, so I don't have to worry about what I'm driving over. There's nothing out there anyways to drive over. The, the track's all open. So it's not a problem to drive anymore. I'm real comfortable with the car. I've got it set up so I can just slip in the window and drop right in the seat. I don't have to lift the body to get in. That's cool. I, I put the body down in the staging lanes, drive it up to, to be ready to race, and when I'm ready to race, I just slip in the window in the seat, put the belts on, and I'm ready to go. So. Cool. It's kind of funny too, when I got done with the car, when I got done with all the chassis work and the, the electronics and the ignition and everything, I didn't have any money left over for a motor. So I had to go out in my shed and pull all the used motor parts that I had and put together a motor, and that's this motor. <laughs> this motor.